I have here a piece of American cherry and I'm going to divide it into three equal components. This bit of timber has been planed all around, PAR, which means I can cut these into thirds. If it was rough sawn on the outer edges, I would make the centre one tighter to my finished size and I'd leave the outside two slightly bigger to later on remove the coarse edges. But for this one, I'm going to try and get them so they're pretty much uh, the same. If I measure this piece of timber, it's pretty much 66 millimetres. I want to divide that into three equal pieces. So that should be, in theory, 22 millimetres each. But I need to make an allowance for one, two saw kerfs. We've got the body of the blade and we've got the set left and the set right on the teeth. If I set my fence to the inside of my bandsaw blade, I'm going to try and set him to about the 21 millimetres. It can be a little bit tricky to see and set him up exactly. So I will do a test cut. I will do a test cut against one edge of the timber. I will flip the timber over and do another test cut. And then I will measure the middle piece. If the middle piece is a long way out of thirds, then I will just tap and adjust my fence. And I'll use my saw curve that's already in my timber as my reference to how I'm uh, adjusting that across. If I'm happy with my thirds, I'll go ahead and do my cutting. I've got my fence in the lower position. I've got my guard down as close as we'd say reasonably practical. And for reasonably practical, I say to my students, that's within 10 millimetres or three eighths of the inch. What I don't want to do is get anybody's fingers going underneath the guard and into the bandsaw blade. But that's the other reason we've got push sticks. Push sticks might be a little bit like eating with chopsticks, but once you get used to using them, they are fantastic. And you want to keep your fingers well and truly away from the bandsaw blade. It is one of the safest machines, but it is also used in the meat and fish industry for cutting up carcasses. You don't want to be cutting up yourself on it. Purely keep it to the timber. That's one of the outer pieces with a planed edge. That's the other outer piece with a planed edge. That was my center piece. It's now got two bandsawn edges. I didn't do a lot of measuring, but actually I'm pretty damn close size wise. We're probably within a 64th, certainly no more than a millimeter. So I don't have to spend hours and hours measuring, trying to move it. Trying to measure exactly where a bandsaw blade is is quite difficult because you're trying to measure a particular tooth. I normally leave my timber oversized, probably at least an eighth of an inch, uh, possibly more than that, for us then to go and do the planing work because they have probably bent and warped a little bit because, again, we've been releasing tension. So I will let those settle before I go on to the more accurate machining process.